say that if I have to choose between the two brands, I'd rather look at SmackDown. Honestly, because they have better talent. I know that's a lot to say because of how bad the booking is, how bad the writing is. I just feel like SmackDown does have to a better extent some better talent. But when you look at Raw, you got to say this was a better show than last week. It just was. I'm not saying it was spectacularly better. Nope. And I know a lot of people are going to say, dude, why, why do you keep saying this? Raw was great last week. Really? A lot of the stuff they put on Raw was garbage. Look. This week, it was better. Last week, it made no sense. Look at the booking here. End of the show. You got Seth Rollins and Dean going up against the bar. The bar. And jobbing themselves out. What does that mean? What does it mean for Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose to be jobbed only a couple of weeks before Survivor Series when they were supposed to meet the New Day? Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, it's better to have one bad guy and one good guy team to deal with. Then why didn't you do it weeks before that? And built the bar up. Look, if I remember correctly, we got about two weeks before Survivor Series actually airs. And now with only two weeks left, if I'm correct, I think it's the 19th. I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember the date. But it's near the end of the month. We got about two weeks left before the end, near the end of the month where they normally would show Survivor Series. And you just jobbed out your tag champs. Why? Now, here's another. Asuka. Asuka had some good matches with Emma, who's no longer with the business of the WWE. Asuka now destroys a jobber, which is fine. She's supposed to be destroying jobbers before she goes for a Sasha Banks, before she goes for a Bailey, before she goes for Nia Jax. It, it, it's all right. That's fine. Before she even meets Alexa Bliss. You should have her go up against all those women, including a Mickey James. That's if Mickey James does become champ. Then you have to have Alexa Bliss flip positions with Mickey James, and she's got to go for go for Alexa before reaching Mickey. But where are the interviews? In NXT, she had interviews periodically. It's not the point that she talks greater than any woman alive. It's not the point. The point is that Asuka should be talking once in a while. She should have had one interview in the ring from either Charlie or Renee Young. You've seen her in the back, but you have not seen her actually have an interview in the back. You've not seen her have an interview in the ring. And that's really not good. When you're promoting Asuka so strongly, she should be interviewed by now. Then you got this. You got Samoa Joe coming back. He destroys last week Apollo Crews. Then he destroys Titus O'Neil. Now he destroys Titus O'Neil. He destroys Apollo Crews. Doesn't really have much of a match. And guess what? He asks for competition against Finn Balor. They have an extremely competitive match. And then they have a count out. Both of them. Why? Why did they make it so competitive between Finn and Samoa Joe? Honestly, that shouldn't have happened. Samoa Joe, I'm saying this clearly, as much as people love Finn Balor, Samoa Joe is a ballad. I get angry when people believe that those who they cheer for are the best. Now, there's a lot of good reasons to say you're probably right. But when it comes down to it, when someone you cheer for, you believe is the best, one, doesn't compare to most of the talent. Two, when he was pushed, he was pushed too soon and they gave him a title. And three, and this is the most crucial thing, since then, he has been jobbing. As much as you want to say Finn Balor is a superior talent, he has been rushed. He has been jobbing. And essentially speaking, there is better talent. Look at AJ Styles. AJ is a better talent than him. He just is flat out. If you're talking about the second coming of Daniel Bryan, it is AJ Styles. He just is. 
And it's not the point because he's older than age and, and, and Daniel Bryan and he has more seasoning. He just is a better performer. He was a better performer five years ago. He's still a better performer now. He just is. And I'm not taking anything away from Finn. He's a good performer, but he's not a great one. And then you see a Samoa Joe who just came back and he should not be having a count out loss to a Finn Balor. I'm sorry, he shouldn't. And I know a lot of people say, well, look what happened to NXT feuds. That was NXT. Finn is not being pushed like he once was. He needs to use the demon more and they're either not letting him use it or he's choosing not to use it. So you tell me what makes the best sense. It's either have him use the demon where people know he's a better character or barely use the demon and make him try to win through just the leather jacket he wins. No, wears, not wins. You, you see, this gets on my nerves. It's just not right. That's just me. Then you got Miz. You got Braun Strowman. Hmm. Here's the thing. The Miz match was nothing. It's not the point of the situation. Seeing that you got two big guys on the roster and now you stick them at each other as a fight can give an interest. I still believe that instead of them fighting, they should team up. I would rather see Braun Strowman with Kane as Braun Strowman is Kane's protege. This is what... I'm painting you a picture. Kane knows his brother's done. And they set it up that Kane says, My brother Undertaker's not wrestling anymore. I need someone to go with me. I need someone to go down the dark side with me. The hell of my life. And I see now Braun Strowman, who easily, easily, can give me what my brother cannot right now. A partner of destruction. A new brother of destruction. Braun Strowman. Does that sound better than just letting these guys go at it for no apparent reason? Then one monster feels that he's being forgotten about? I'd rather see Kane deal with a Braun Strowman as a protege to a mentor. It'll actually help Braun Strowman a lot to deal with a Kane. Yes, Kane's ability has been really screwed up because he's been a face, he's been a heel, he's been a face, he's been a heel, he's been corporate, then he's been stupid, then he's been funny. Yes, but still, when he does put the, the big red monster on, it does work to a certain extent. So why not put these two as a tag team, destroy everybody? And give Braun Strowman some credibility with a real monster. Someone from the Attitude Era. Team him up with that. I really believe it would be better than what we're getting here. That's that's just me. Um, a, I'm just going to say this briefly. What was that when it came to the guitar on a pole match? I mean, it's been 20 years since it's been done at least. And I don't remember. Either with Jeff Jarrett doing it or it was the Honky Tonk Man who was doing it. It doesn't really matter. The point is, we haven't seen one of those in a while. Nice to see it being done. But seeing that Jason Jordan wins... No. No. Look, I like Jason Jordan. I want to see something be done with Jason Jordan and Kurt Angle again. I believe they're totally screwing up a great angle with Jason Jordan and Kurt Angle. Now, maybe next year they'll actually go there. But right now they're not. So right now, Jason Jordan's basically floating. Why are you letting a floater win over someone who's getting a lot of heat? In a, in <laughs> Elias should not be jobbing. I'm sorry, guys. As much as a lot of people like Jason Jordan, I do myself. Elias should not be jobbing to Jason Jordan. I'm just saying. How do I feel about this, Raw? It was a tease. It was a tease with a lot of silly booking, but it was a tease that wasn't too bad. This is just my point of view of it and this raw review. Tell me how you feel below. Watch for my SmackDown review. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.